today we're talking about eukaryotic cells. Uh, that includes organisms that can be found in kingdoms, protistas, fungi, plantae, and animalia. So what are eukaryotic cells? A eukaryotic cell is one that has a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so what exactly does it mean to be a eukaryote? I'm glad you asked. It describes a type of cell that has genetic material organized into a membrane-bound nucleus. Okay, so we talked about organelles in prokaryotic cells, but what's an organelle again? Thank, thank you for asking. Uh, an organelle is a specialized structure found inside cells that carry out a specific life process. It has a specific function. Okay, so I keep hearing membrane-bound organelles, so what does that mean? So, being membrane-bound means that these organelles have two membranes as protection. Uh, in, this, in this field lesson, we're going to be learning about different types of organelles, and including some like the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, the chloroplast, and the mitochondria, all of which have those membrane-bound organelles. That's what makes them so special that can be found in that eukaryotic cell. Now, I know I just listed off a whole lot of organelles that are not familiar to you. So let me explain the function of these organelles. First, we're going to start with the nucleus. So the nucleus is right in here in the plant cell and right in here in the animal cell. Um, so they actually contain the genetic information, or the DNA, um, that directs all of the cell's activities. Okay, so prokaryotic cells have DNA, eukaryotic cells have it in a nucleus, kind of like the boss's office. Perfect, perfect example, definitely. So within that nucleus, we actually have a nucleolus. So right, right inside that nucleus, we have these little nucleoli, nucleoluses, um, that are located within the nucleus and responsible for making ribosomes. Okay, so these guys make ribosomes kind of like a carpenter builds houses or something? Perfect, absolutely. So, um, do you remember ribosomes from the prokaryotic cell that we learned about earlier? Yeah, um, they have, uh, prokaryotes have ribosomes that make proteins. Great, so do eukaryotes. So definitely have that in common with the prokaryotic cell. Okay, so that's the little box then. Perfect. So some of them are out here, and then some of them are on this. Are they both ribosomes? They are both ribosomes, absolutely. They can be found free-floating or attached to this uh, rough yard here. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, so the next uh, item on our list is going to be the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. It, it can mean the same thing. So these guys, uh, they are actually found right in here. Golgi complex, Golgi apparatus, Golgi body, all mean the same thing. So these guys right in here, they are responsible for packaging up material created in the cell for transport sometimes outside of that cell. Okay, so kind of like UPS or the post office. Great, great example. Yeah. So uh, usually in the lab, the Golgi, you will find something called a vesicle. And this right in here is going to be the vesicle right here. And then right here, that animal cell as well. And so this guy stores, transports, or digest materials within the cell. Really, you're, you're seeing these uh, vesicles around those that Golgi apparatus, like I stated earlier, around there. Okay, so if the Golgi complex or the Golgi bodies are like the post office, that must mean that the vesicles are kind of like the mail truck. That's a great job. Good job. So the lysosome is up next. So the lysosome is also present in, in um, eukaryotic cells. And so we usually call these guys the trash cans of the cell because they have all kinds of digestive enzymes in there to help to break down um, old or worn out organelles that that cell doesn't need anymore. Okay, so they're like trash cans or janitors. They help clean up this. Perfect. And I forgot to mention that they can also serve to um, get rid of excess uh, material that we made have broken down bacteria or viruses or things of that nature. Okay. So up next we have the mitochondria, or the mitochondrion or mitochondria plural. So these guys right in here, uh, I like to tell my children that they actually look like little hot dogs with mustard on them. And they can again be found in all kinds of uh, eukaryotic cells. And this guy is super duper important because he actually um, converts sugar into ATP or energy for us. Okay, so 
sugar, I remember, gives you quick energy. So this is how that sugar becomes quick energy? Absolutely. Okay, so they're kind of like the power plants of the cell. Very good, very nice. Um, the rough ER is up next, and the rough ER is right in here, right outside of that nucleus. And uh, can you kind of tell us why it's called the rough ER or rough endocytic reticulum? Well, it's got those ribosomes on it, which makes it kind of look rough. Great. That's exactly why it's called the rough endocytic reticulum. And it helps to make and transport proteins. Um, smooth ER we can find right uh, right next to that rough ER, so it's smooth, so hence it does not have those ribosomes attached to them, and they are actually responsible for uh, creating and transporting steroids, uh, things of that nature. Okay, so the rough ER transports proteins, and the smooth ER transports lipids and steroids, so they're both kind of like the highways of the cell. Perfect. Uh, the vacuole is something that we cover next, and this guy is pretty cool. So this guy stores a variety of things such as water, nutrients, or waste products. And in the animal cell, uh, we have the vacuole right here, and in the plant cell, we have the vacuole right in here. So you notice that uh, they both have vacuoles, however, the plant is going to be much larger than the animal cell uh, vacuole. All right, so they store things kind of like the storage building or storage shed. The chloroplast is up next. So here is the chloroplast right in here. And so this little guy, he helps to capture that sunlight uh, to produce food and energy for that cell. Okay, so if it captures sunlight to make energy, it's kind of like a solar power plant. But what I notice is it's not in the animal cell. That's very good. Um, so that is, that is definitely true, solely having to do with the, uh, with the plant cells. Okay. All right, and next up we have something called the centriole. And the centriole is going to be right in here, um, only a part of the animal cell for, for this particular uh, organelle. And it is actually responsible for uh, reproduction purposes. It is used for reproduction purposes in the cell. Okay, so it helps the cell to reproduce. Perfect, it helps the cell divide. Okay. And um, the last two items that we have to talk about are going to be the cell membrane and the cell wall. Would you happen to remember what they do from prokaryotes? I do. So prokaryotes have a cell membrane and a cell wall too. So I noticed that the animal cell has a cell membrane and so does the plant cell. So that's how stuff go in and out of the cell. But animal cells don't have a cell wall. But the cell wall does help protect the plant cell. Perfect. Very good. Very good. 